we have a uh, SOS warning, we have an ESP warning. Oh, nice. Real nice. Wow. F, F, F. Hey everyone, welcome back to DC Motorworks with my latest bad decision. This is my 2002 or 3 C32 AMG. Probably the worst C32 in recent history. I paid $1,300 for this car. So you can hear I've already got it running in the background, so I apologize if that kind of drowns me out. But uh, the battery had one volt in it, so essentially completely dead. So letting that charge up a little bit so we can do something with it. You can see already we are uh, have got a little bit of a problem there. That is a, an active fuel leak. So when I actually drove this car here, uh, the fuel gauge does not work amongst many other things that don't work in this car. So I actually brought my dog with me to work that day and we were both stuck on the side of the road. Uh, you should have seen the look on his face. I may have a picture somewhere I'll throw up, but uh, he was not thrilled that we were stuck on the side of the road in this car. Well, you can see it's actually running pretty okay right now. It usually does not. It does, has a nice throaty sound to it. Uh, it does have a uh, muffler delete, and I don't know what else is done to the exhaust because I haven't been under this car yet. You can see it's uh, oh, sorry, a um, little worse for the wear cosmetically. See, it's got this fabulous flat black paint job on it. Uh, when it should actually be a really nice burgundy color. If we take a look here, you can see it poking through in some areas. I was really hoping this was like Plasti Dip or something so it'll come off nicely, but you can see beautiful dark red. So that's kind of what drew me to this car, even though you can see it, uh, it was sprayed on and yeah, it's, it's not coming back the way I thought it would, but See, we got the seat back covers falling apart there. We got some extra parts. You can see my jump box hanging out there. Um, I don't really remember what the rest of the interior looks like. It's got a uh, suede headliner done. This would have had a gray headliner from the factory, but someone did it in black Alcantara or suede, which actually looks to be a pretty decent job. You can also see they did the B pillars here and like they did, a, did what they were supposed to do. See, has its original C32 AMG floor mats. Only a couple tears in the driver's seat. But the passenger seat's in pretty decent shape. Steering wheel's a little worse for the wear. It's got a bunch of leather peeling off of it. The steering wheel buttons are peeling. It looks rightfully awful. You can see there on the instrument cluster, we have a uh, SOS warning, we have an ESP warning. What else do we have here? Lamp warning, no fuel, that doesn't work. Washer fluid, and uh, we have no miles. You see that? That's pretty exciting. We have dashes for miles. That is generally because someone has swapped out either the engine module or the transmission control module or something along that that stores the mileage. And when the bins don't match, the instrument cluster gets kind of grumpy. They could have actually just changed the instrument cluster as well. But like I said, that makes it grumpy and it won't show the mileage. So we'll have to see about that. I also drove this car 25 miles from my house in one gear because it is stuck in second gear for whatever reason. So we were 4,000, 5,000 RPM the whole way here running 40, 50 miles an hour in second gear, but we made it. You can also see uh, Power steering is all the power you can muster is all you can get because the fluid that you put in it pours out just about as fast as you can put it in. You can see I've got a bottle sitting there on the passenger floorboard. The uh, door stop does not work for the driver's door. Actually, we'll call that self-closing doors. It's just like a Rolls Royce. Let's go ahead and look under the hood. See, it's got this sweet carbon fiber wrap on it get that sweet smell of burning oil from the valve cover gaskets leaking. But someone did retrofit some nice projectors into the standard headlights. See, we have our supercharged 3.2 liter M112 V6, which made 349 horsepower back when it was new. 
But this one has a smaller pulley on it, so hopefully it makes more. But um, I'm actually shocked how well it's running right now, because normally it barely runs and it's shaking and it's unhappy and making all kinds of awful noises, but maybe we can actually make something of it for this video. But you can see it's nice. We do have our grills here, which are super expensive if you do lose them for the factory AMG body kit cars. So this will decide whether this becomes a parts car for our other C32, which is over there. That one is more factory. You can see the front end's missing off of it. That car has been in pieces and needs to be put back together. One of the many things that is on the back burner here. You can also see it's got its factory wheels, which are much preferred to the ones on this car. So let's go ahead and uh, get this one up in the air. Let's check out that fuel leak and uh, see what this car looks like underneath. Ew, what do you think that is? <laughs> no, I haven't actually. No, 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 Paul. No. Not, not necessary. It's, um, it's uh, wet. I don't know what they have going on here. But this is all power steering fluid amongst other fluids. Uh, I really don't know what's going on here. No, it's, it's there. It's just uh, rather disappointing. Oh, random wire hanging out there, okay. It does have a belly pan, Andy. It has one. Good car, good car. We got lots of leaks. Conductor sleeve is dry. Probably just means there's no fluid in it. We've got a resonator delete. Do we have cats? No. Uh, no. No, no cats. Okay. No cats, no resonator, no secondary cats. Oh, we have a muffler though. Oh man, it stinks. Oh yeah, forgot about our fuel leak here. Let's uh, we'll drop this panel and see what's going on there. Flex disc is, uh, it's flexed past its uh, due date. No leaks from the diff. It has tires-ish. Yeah, ooh man, look at that front flex diff, that one's, that one's past it. Yeah, this one's uh, seen some better days. Maybe we'll take care of that power steering leak so we can at least have something there. But let's go ahead and pull this panel and we'll see what this fuel leak is because um, I don't think Andy wants me to set him on fire. Oh, nice. Real nice. Out if you need a gas tank or not? Uh, we're just trying to figure out at this point. We don't really know. Cool. Careful, Andy. Might get you. You really gotta pull the whole panel down? Uh -huh. God, well, like so false. what happens is people use the wrong hose to clamp on things, and then it cuts into the hose itself that's already old and brittle. Yeah. It tears it up the rest of the way. But what did they attempt to fix is the question. Yeah. You're trying to say there's nothing yeah. redeemable? <laughs> wow. It's floor cleaner. There you go, Andy. All right, I can get into that. <laughs> It cleans its own mess from up in the front where it's leaking everything. Oh, I don't want to get covered in whatever's under this car. <laughs> now I need to move my, uh, my lift pad so I can actually get that panel off. So now that we've got the entire side under panel there removed, you can see all of our fuel here on our original fuel filter, Mercedes fuel filter, but someone has replaced the clamps with the wrong style. So maybe it got done at the factory or at the dealership once, because it should have these kind of like click lock clamps on it. But it looks like what they've done, you can see with these hose clamps that it actually pinches into the hose and can cut the hose. So we'll pull those off, put some regular clamps on there and hopefully be able to cut a piece of the bad part of the hose out and make that work at least for now. But, uh, Let's uh, run codes on this and see what, uh, what all the car has to complain about. All right, so I just hooked up the battery charger so I can actually run codes on this without it getting super grumpy about battery voltage. But, uh, let's hook up the uh, SDS here and 
see what this one has to complain about. Because I'm sure it's going to be just about everything. So, must have been diagnosing a uh, older Mercedes with a 38 pin connector earlier today. So, let's get our 16 pin OBD connector. Hook it to our multiplexer here. Now, we can see what's going on. That's exciting. Two keys, guys, two keys. So if you have a look here, we'll walk you through uh, how to get a uh, code read or short test. So we go to our brand, Mercedes-Benz, passenger car. You can click which model you have. I know this is a 203, but if you click on C-Class, you can see 203 here. That looks like what we've got. And you go to diagnosis here below. And that brings up DOS. You gotta click through a bunch of warnings. There we go, look at that. So you got a sedan, gas engine, left-hand steering. And we're gonna choose, this is 203.065 C32 AMG compressor. Later models will uh, automatically decipher which model the car is, but Around the 2001, 2002 stuff, we'll, uh, you'll have to manually select it there. Communication with EZS, which is the central gateway in this car, the ignition switch. Just do a quick test, hit OK, and it's going to read through every module in the car if it can. See already, capital F is a current fault, lowercase f is a stored fault. Keep going, we got lots of F's here. This is a report card you don't wanna get and give your parents, guys. Got some check marks. F, 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 test the radio, you can hear all that going off. Look at that, it's done. Um, we have uh, lots of F's there. How many check marks did we get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven check marks. Lots of Fs. We can filter it here, the F4 button, so the modules that just have faults. And then if you hit F8 here, it'll give you all of the detail. So you can see this code is just telling you there's a fault in the transmission control unit. Idle speed control is a problem. This one likely has a vacuum leak or something like that, which is why usually it runs bad, but of course it doesn't wanna act up on video. Uh, we've got a conductor plate issue here, that's more than likely. It's saying that the input speed and output speed sensors on the transmission are implausible, which usually means that one isn't reading. Steering angle sensor, that's just from the battery being dead. You have to reinitialize the steering wheel, turn it lock to lock, left to right. That's just seat occupancy stuff. Headlights are kind of grumpy. Ooh, lots of faults in the rear. Alarm siren, that's a big problem on uh, some cars because on the S-Class of this generation, the 220 S-Class, it will pop the fuse for the ignition switch and cause you a no start. It won't even turn the key. You'll get the dashes on the instrument cluster just like on this car. It makes them pretty grumpy. See our fuel level sensor has an open or short circuit, which is why our fuel level does not work. Roof system's not normalized, that's for the sunroof. That's because the battery died. You have to re-normalize all the windows. Oh man, our heated seat is not operating. So we're gonna try and get in the trunk here. But uh, so far, efforts are failing. It's not working, but it does have an actual blade key. Let's try the other key. It does. So like most of the things are there. Are they different keys? No, they're the same. I mean, it's just, this is a newer key. This is the original style. But the con, there's like, there, well, there's a bunch of different keys, but this is like early 2000s to 2006 ish. And then uh, they went to the oval panic button key, which I don't have here. And then this one they use pretty much up until this day with the, we call them the triangle keys with the triangle panic button. But uh, yeah, that's not happening, so. Well, 
I'm gonna fix a couple things on this. We're gonna take care of that fuel leak and that power steering leak, so at least it is uh, decently movable. And uh, maybe we'll get a conductor plate and uh, get the transmission working again. And uh, at least then it'll be drivable-ish. And uh, you tell us, flip it, junk it, use it as a donor for our other C32. Let's, uh, and everyone say goodbye to Paul. You can see him right through there. Okay. <laughs>